Intel has an extremely complicated way of naming their CPUs from coves to lakes to fields uh, to mic architectures and cores to letter suffixes and a whole lot more. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Intel's naming scheme for their desktop consumer CPUs, excluding Celerons and Pentiums. So there are four basic classifications of Intel consumer desktop CPUs. Those are the generation, like 8th generation, 9th generation, the code name or mic architecture, like Coffee Lake or Cascade Lake, the family, like i5 or i7, and the core, like Willow Cove or Golden Cove. We'll start with the most straightforward one, the generation. The generation can be found by simply looking at the first number in the actual name of the CPU. So for example, the i7-8700K is eighth generation because the first number is technically eight in the name of the CPU. This is true for all chips up to 10th generation Intel chips where the first two letters, or sorry, two numbers become the, the generation of the CPU. So the i7-10710U would be 10th generation because the first two numbers are 10. On desktops, each new generation means some sort of improvement or a change in some part of the processor, and each generation also means a new mic architecture or a new or possibly refined overall layout to the overall CPU. Generations start at all the way from the first generation Intel Core i series to the 13th generation Intel Core i series, which is the last known Intel generation that Intel is actually planning to release. So when someone says first gen Intel, they are referring to the first generation of Intel Core i series CPUs, which includes CPUs like the i7-930, i5-650, and so on. But generations are pretty vague, and they don't really tell us much about uh, performance of a specific generation compared to previous or later generations. That's why there's another classification, which is the code name or mic architecture. As I mentioned before, each new generation means a new mic architecture, so there are a total of 13 mic architectures for Intel's desktop Core i series. Starting from the first generation, the order of mic architecture goes Nhalem, Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, Haswell, Broadwell, Skylake, KB Lake, Coffee Lake, Coffee Lake Refresh, Comet Lake, Rocket Lake, Alger Lake, and Meteor Lake. Intel used to operate on a TikTok model for its microarchitectures, where the tick would represent a new microarchitecture and the talk would represent a refined version of that microarchitecture, which then technically meant that it was actually its own separate microarchitecture. Starting with first generation Intel, which was based on the Nehalem microarchitecture and on a 45 nanometer process node. Second generation was Sandy Bridge on a 32 nanometer process node and was the beginning of the true TikTok model for Intel's Core i series. Third generation was Ivy Bridge on a 22 nanometer process node based off of Sandy Bridge but shrunk to a smaller process node, representing the talk in Intel's TikTok model. We then move on to Haswell, or fourth generation Intel. Haswell was on the 22 nanometer process node, and it actually had two segments within Haswell itself. There were regular Haswell chips, and then there were Devil's Canyon, and all Devil's Canyon chips had a nine in the third letter of the CPU. Both are still under the Haswell microarchitecture, and both are fourth gen Intel. Fifth generation Intel was named Broadwell, which was a 14 nanometer process node and a die shrink of Haswell. Sixth generation was named Skylake, beginning the era of the lakes, and coincidentally the end of Intel's TikTok model. KB Lake, which was seventh generation Intel, was still on 14 nanometer, while Intel promised that they had 10 nanometer chips that they were cooking up in the kitchen. Now, I'm not talking about the dinky little 10 nanometer chips that Intel produced for mobile. I'm talking about some real 10 nanometer chips that would actually provide some significant performance over previous generations. Obviously, we all know that it didn't really pan out for Intel, and Intel didn't really produce any 10 nanometer chips um, and don't have any plans to for at least another year, and the promised 10 nanometer chips just seemingly would never come. Intel also charged high prices for their products, partly due to the fact that their competitor, AMD, was just couldn't seem to get a hold in the CPU market. But in 2017, Ryzen launched, and after the wave of issues that plagued first generation Ryzen, it actually became a lot more popular due to its high price to performance in many tasks compared to competing Intel chips. But Intel just couldn't compete on the refined 14 nanometer process node. Eighth generation Coffee Lake chips, ninth generation Coffee Lake refresh chips, and 10th generation Comet Lake chips all use a refined 14 nanometer process node, as well as still using Skylake cores. 11th generation Intel, or Rocket Lake, is the first time that we're seeing a non-Skylake core being used in Intel desktop consumer CPUs, although it is still on a 14 nanometer process node. 12th generation Intel, or Alder Lake, as it is speculated, uh, is the first time that Intel is actually releasing a 10 nanometer chip to mainstream desktop platforms. 
After that, rumors speculate that 13th generation Intel or Meteor Lake will have a 7 nanometer process node and then possibly an unknown 5 nanometer chip after that. The third way of classifying Intel desktop consumer CPUs is the family. The four mainstream desktop families are i3, i5, i7, and i9. You've probably heard of them. And up until Coffee Lake refresh, there actually were no desktop consumer i9 chips, only high-end desktop ones. The different families determine a number of things, but most commonly they are known for determining core count. It varies a lot, but in recent years, Intel has had to bump up their core and thread count to match and compete against AMD's offerings. i3s during the Sandy Bridge era were really only meant for basic tasks, and now they're at the point where you can actually put them in some gaming builds. i5s, again, they were used for budget builds, and they were used for things that weren't supposed to be as intensive, and now you can use them for gaming rigs, high-end gaming rigs, and even some workstation purposes. So Intel's really being pushed to do more with their lineup, and part of that is because of AMD's recent strong offerings compared to the past. The fourth, last, and in my opinion, the most important way of classifying Intel Core i desktop series CPUs is the core. The core is actually the physical silicon on the CPU die, and for generations 1 to 13, there are a total of nine core architectures. Since 2018, Intel has moved to using the Cove suffix uh, for naming cores, although the first few ones were for mobile and not for desktop. First generation, Intel used the Nehalem core. Second generation, Intel used Sandy Bridge cores. Third generation Intel used Ivy Bridge cores. Fourth generation Intel used Haswell cores. Fifth generation Intel used Broadwell cores. Sixth to tenth generation Intel used Skylake cores. Eleventh generation is speculated to use Willow Cove cores. Twelfth generation is going to use Golden Cove cores. And thirteenth generation is speculated to use something called Media, or sorry, Ocean Cove cores. There are also some smaller ways to classify Intel CPUs, and one of those is through CPU suffixes. You've probably seen them before, but I'll go over them pretty quickly. For CPUs that have K at the end, that means it is overclockable, and you can change the multiplier of the CPU as well as a lot of other settings that can help you overclock. The K-series CPUs also tend to come with a higher base and boost clock compared to their non-K variants. If the CPU has an F at the end, that means there are no integrated graphics, and people buying a dedicated GPU can save a little bit of money by buying these chips. If the CPU has an S at the end, that means it has been pre-binned by Intel, and basically what that means is that it'll usually get higher overclocks compared to non-S variants, and will also come with some higher clocks out of the box. And what about the last three numbers in the CPU name? What do those mean? Well, as you go up in numbers, you should see higher performance. For example, the i5-8600K will outperform the i3-8100, and the i7-8700K should outperform the i5-8600K because 700 is greater than 600, which is greater than 100. That is only across the same generation, though, so the i5-2400 may not be better than the i3-10300, even though 400 is actually larger than 300. Generally, 100 to 300 is for i3 models, 400 to 600 is for i5 models, 700 is for i7 models, and 900 is for i9 models. Intel also seems to change sockets quite frequently. Sockets follow the TikTok model where applicable, and Intel uses a socket known as LGA or Land Grid Array. Basically what that means is that there are contact pins on the motherboard that line up with contact pads on the CPU, and Intel names their sockets by putting LGA and then the number of pins on the motherboard. First generation, Intel uses LGA 1156 socket, so that means that there are 1156 pins on the motherboard. This does mean that you cannot use CPUs meant for different sockets in the same socket. Second and third generation Intel both use LGA 1155. Fourth and fifth generation Intel both use LGA 1150. Sixth and seventh generation Intel both use LGA 1151 V1. And eighth and ninth generation Intel both use LGA 1151 V2. Basically that what this means is that LGA 1151 V1 motherboards will not be able to accept 8th and 9th generation Intel chips without some modifications. 10th and 11th generation Intel both use the LGA 1200 socket, and 12th generation Intel is speculated to use the LGA 1700 socket. Unfortunately, we don't have any information on 13th generation Intel. So that was all a lot of information, but what are some real world examples of these concepts? Well, we can take some CPUs, um, out of the magic hat. For example, the i3-2100, i5-4690K, the i7-9700KF, and the i9-9900KS. The i3-2100 is in the i3 family, it's second generation, so it uses the Sandy Bridge mic architecture and core, and it is not overclockable. 
it uses the LGA 1155 socket. The i5 4690K is in the i5 family. It's fourth generation, but remember that any fourth generation chips that have a nine for the third number is actually under the Devil's Canyon product line. It's still using the Haswell microarchitecture and core, and it is overclockable because it does have the K at the end. It can be used in LGA 1150 motherboards. The i7 9700KF is part of the i7 family. It's ninth generation, so it uses the Coffee Lake Refresh microarchitecture and Skylake cores. It's overclockable and missing the integrated graphics, hence the K and the F. It can be used in LGA 1151 V2 motherboards. The i9 9900KS is in the i9 family, so it's ninth generation, and it uses the Coffee Lake Refresh microarchitecture and Skylake cores. It's overclockable and pre binned and it will overclock a little better than the regular 9900K. It can be used in LGA 1151 V2 motherboards. So that's Intel CPU naming scheme. It's super long and complicated, but hopefully this video was able to help you out just a little bit more. That's it for this video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it, down if you didn't. Subscribe for more tech content and turn on notifications so that you never miss a new video. And follow me on Twitter for news, announcements, giveaways, and more.